Nick Ferrari, joy and pleasure to meet and talk you, with Mark. you. Give me the uh, give me the state of play as you would see it from the nation's leading broadcasting seat, Britain. State of play. Uh, grim, I'm afraid to say. We had a bit of a lift in the London Olympics. That was definitely something to celebrate. But pretty much since the banking crisis, what, 2008, 2009, things have been unremittingly grim in the UK, and we have to be honest about it. After the banking crisis, we had Brexit, and Brexit hasn't worked for either party. If you were a Brexiteer, no, this isn't the Brexit that anyone voted Weren't for. Weren't you? I was a Brexiteer, yeah, but not this. I was a Brexit. Absolutely, I bought into it. Probably a reluctant one, but I, yeah, I voted for it. And of course, if you're a Remainer, you can point to all the problems. Then, problems not of our own making. You've had things such as the coronavirus pandemic. You've had, I mean, basically, we sunk to the level of Italy in the way that we were changing prime ministers uh, last year. Boris Johnson brought an extraordinary level of enthusiasm. I'm a fully signed up Boris fan. We worked together a lot on the radio. We did a lot of phone ins when he was mayor. I went round Europe with him a couple of times when he was PM. But he just was no man for detail. You don't elect Boris Johnson for detail. He can't do it. Um, it's like having a fish ride a bike. It's never going to happen. <laughs> then we had the disastrous period of Liz Truss. Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister now, brings a, a, a period of stability. But in all honesty, the coronation, we're all looking forward to it. But if you are stuck north of the Red Wall, which is this supposedly yes, yes, this yeah. mythical mm-hmm. line in England where supposedly it is a Labour stronghold, the party that is in opposition... And the world hasn't been going your way, so you voted Brexit because you felt you were left behind, and you probably were left behind, and us guys in the South were doing well. Well, you, you might get a little bit pissed, if I can say that word, because you'll get some free cheap beer on the weekend, but it's not going to change your life. So it'll be fun, we'll have a great day, but the realities of the very deep divisions will stay. See, how do, how do I, I... I might Look, I've been here five minutes. I love it. I see a vibrant London, a vibrant Britain, an exciting place. It doesn't seem that expensive to me. From where I come from, so 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 so, uh, uh, are you? What am I? Roast into glasses? <laughs> no, you've nailed it without realizing, because London is not Britain. That that is the difference. And again, and I, we won't stay with Brexit, but it, it, the minute you got out of what is called London and the home counties, which is the Kent and the Surrey and the mm-hmm. Sussex, so it's sort of commu- stockbroker belt, you, you're probably... As you started to go north, to go through the counties, what's called the Midlands, and then mm-hmm. you got to the north, you got to the Lancashires, the Cheshires, the Yorkshires, the Durham. It is a very, very different picture. There are two divisions. There's not just a geographical division, really, in the United Kingdom, as there always has been north and south, as there are with your islands. There's not just that. There's the people who... The country is working for, like you've been, I imagine, in the restaurants and the hotels or whatever, the mm, coffee mm, shops in mm, London. Mm. Everything's quite buzzy. Everything's great. Phenomenal range of languages, phenomenal range of skin colours and backgrounds. It is a multicultural, diverse, I would argue, probably one of the one of the most fun cities on the planet, sure. not just in Europe. It's a great buzzy town. If I took you up to somewhere called Middlesbrough or to Sunderland or places like that, it's a very, very different picture. And again, they've been left behind. Is Rishi going to win? Can he win? Is it possible? It is. Look, it is possible. Look, if I was a Conservative pollster, Mike, I'd point you to the following. The sort of recovery that Sir Keir Starmer has to make for the Labour Party, is it's of the Blair years. It, it is absolutely huge. We have something called boundary changes which come yeah. in, which you probably have as well. So Electorate. the sitting party, yeah, yeah. 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 So they, they, but all parties do that. They are currently about 15 points ahead, the Labour Party. Rishi Sunak is a capable pair of hands, but by God, you'd have had to work hard to be worse than the last one, in all honesty, wouldn't you? The one who famously didn't last as long as a lettuce. Um, so, or, <laughs> or my Spotify trial actually lasted longer than Liz Trust. Can he do it? They would argue yes. Will he do it? No. But I don't see Starmer getting over the line on his own. That is to say, he might do a deal with the Lib Dems or a deal with the Scots or whatever it might be. That's the current state of play. But uh, if you ask me to go down to the bookies with you, I'd say probably October next year for the election. OK. Industrial action, everyone seems on strike. No one works in this country. Why not? They work if they're in the private sector, uh, and they work because they have to. Mm. Look, what's happened, the argument is a very valid one. They, the government, should probably have given more money when they could. They can't afford it now. The country is on its uppers, as is much of the world, post-pandemic, into Ukraine. And you've got people who have now had below inflation pay rises for year, in some instances, like five or six years. Now, if you go down to your supermarket or you're buying your kids' clothes or shoes and inflation's running at 2 or 3%, you don't really feel it. When it's running at double digit, as it is in the UK, north of 10%, you feel that a great deal. And then you suddenly see that I'm being offered 3%, I'm being offered 5%. And there is a mood abroad. And this is also 13 years of a tired conservative government 
that has not done successful deals with rail workers, with hospital workers, with teachers, so they have had a wave of strikes. They're starting, as we speak, it looks as though they're going to be getting most of the health service back, but it has been very grim, and, I mean, I was just coming into the profession. You go back to the very dark days, pre-Margaret Thatcher, when yeah. we were as riven with strikes as we are now. Fantastic. Talk to me about your job. I mean, how much fun is this? Oh, I mean, you and I are sitting here just... Guess bagging away and somebody <laughs> pays us money. I mean, what a joke. I, it's to be paid to yak. It's yeah. absolutely fantastic. And I think of some of the other jobs I've had where I've had to sort of edit newspapers and you've been worried about headcount or other reporters ripping off the expenses, which, by the way, they always are. Every journalist, <laughs> every journalist is always going to rip off his or her expenses. Just start from that premise. No, outside of being a dad, it is the greatest job. And do you do talkback or you take calls uh, as well? I, no, I don't take calls. I just, I, great. I just talk. You like the talkback? Because nobody... I once did... I would imagine he's big news with you, Ricky Gervais. Oh, of course. OK. So he did a show here called Extras. Massive show, hugely yeah. successful. And I was asked to do that show, which was a huge... I mean, a ridiculous comment. Uh, there is a reason for that story. And he said to me, um, I didn't really know about... I'd heard your name, but I'd never heard your show, but my producer said you'd be great. He said, I listened in for a couple of shows so I knew what I was doing. He said... Some of the things that the callers say, this is comedy, this is Richard, this is comedy I couldn't write. You know, they will just say the most, or you will make a position, and I believe this, and the next call will absolutely knock you to the ground, yeah, and yeah. you've got no. He said, this is comedy you can't script. But then there's also moments of you know, huge drama because you're talking about an issue, you're talking about nurses on strike, and somebody will ring in and say, um, I've got a, a, a ten and a half year old daughter, she's critically ill, and. I don't think she's going to get her cancer up next week. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is, it is shades, you know, yeah. light and dark every day. It's a t t tell me in all honesty, because you and I, as it turns out, have done the same thing. We've done television, you yep. do television, you do yep. newspapers, you do radio. Radio wins for me every time, every mm -hmm. time, by a mile. Mm -hmm. No? Radio wins for me. I, the, the best storytellers are newspaper people. I would say that. Yeah. I, I don't know why, but I grew up in a newspaper. So m both, well, mum trained, but dad was a, a print journo. I love newspaper people's stories. It's such a dark sense of humour. But of the three media, yeah. I always say the best pictures you'll ever see are on the radio because, or as yeah. I'm talking to you now, your listeners back in NZ are trying to think, well, I wonder what he's like. He's got quite a decent voice. I wonder what he looks like. And yeah. they've got a picture of where Precisely. we are. They've got a picture of the studio. And even if we now, and I know you've got video, but it, the, the mind that will be going on of a guy or a woman who's in the car or in the kitchen Precisely. is sensational. Exactly. You're better looking than I did, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so New Zealand people are as charming as I was told. <laughs> exactly. Lo lovely to talk to you. Great. Listen, have a great day. Uh, have a great time. Are you looking forward to all day Coronation Day? All, all day Coronation Day. I'm okay. going to the Coronation. Oh, you so, are? I'm going to the Coronation. Oh, fantastic. You, well, you're going with the Prime Minister, are you? Well, well, no, I'm not going with the Prime Minister. I don't like the Prime Minister all that much. Is, are we going to lose you before I go? I saw in the paper that the Prime Minister thinks, maybe not now, but we're going to lose you from a happy band of nations. Are we going to say goodbye to NZ? Oh, I would be surprised. I don't think in my... I'm 58. I would be astonished... Astonished okay. if we if we lift the um, you know the Commonwealth. I could hear Will you stay in the Commonwealth but not send the, the All Blacks up? Because I'm sick and tired of going to Twickenham and taking a beating from you blokes. Good to see you. Hey, have a nice have a great time. You. Thanks to me.